Welcome to the first episode of BSC Bit Sized Concepts. Here we take a closer look at big scientific ideas not with heavy math but with sharp clarity and deep insight. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Well, how often have you heard the word Lagrangian in physics and you felt it is just a fancy term buried in equations? Well, that is not. Now, the concept of Lagrangian was first propounded by Joseph Louis Lagrange. He was an Italian and naturalized French mathematician, physicist and astronomer and he propounded this concept on a very important mathematical book which is this one. Mechanic Analytic or Analytical Mechanics which was published in 1788. Now this is a book which gave a new and unified way to understand motion in physics. Remember it is built on earlier work especially Newton's laws and introduced the powerful idea of using energy and variational principles now which is known as Lagrangian mechanics. Well, the Lagrangian is simply looks like this, L equals to T minus V, where L is the mathematical uh, quantity, T is the kinetic energy and V is the potential. So, to sum up in short, we can say that Lagrangian is the amount of motion energy an object has, which is denoted by T, the kinetic energy, minus the amount which is stored for restricted energy, which is due to its position, V, which is the potential energy and that is what it gives the Lagrangian L. Now, there is an important point to note that this L is basically not a physical quantity. I mean to say, you cannot say that L is something which you can touch and feel or do something with that. So, this is basically a pure, uh, purely a mathematical quantity. So, it means that it does not represent a measurable thing, but it is very important because it is a tool which we will soon see which generalizes and makes concepts, complex concepts in a much easier manner. So, it is a tool to calculate how a system evolves over time. Now to give you a kind of a pictorial understanding, think of this person who is climbing or bicycling up a hill. So some of your energy goes into fighting gravity or other forces that is the hill's resistance. So you are pedaling hard, right? So this is your kinetic energy, how fast you are going. And then you are going uphill. So there is a potential energy, it can be gravity, friction, whatever. And there are various factors which are resisting you and that is the V. So the hill's resistance, but once you have pushed that, what is left of your effort actually goes in moving you forward. So you must be wondering why there is a T minus V and not, not something which is a plus. Uh, the reason is that after subtracting the Hill's resistance, how much of your effort goes into actual motion. So what is left of your effort actually goes into moving you uh, forward. So this is exactly what the Lagrangian does. It separates what resists the motion from what drives it. So this is a kind of an analogy which shows you that if you're climbing up the hill, that you're pedaling hard, the kinetic energy minus the potential resistance, whatever it is, uh, once you subtract that, what you get is the L and that is the, uh, what uh, makes you forward. So for example, if I take again L equals to T minus V, it is actually telling that nature's way of balancing motion versus constraint, it can be various other constraint factors and figuring out which is the most efficient path someone should take. So here is a cyclist who is, uh, you know, cycling fast. So if your T is greater than V, that means kinetic energy is more than potential energy, you're moving fast. Nothing is holding you back. But here you can see a runner uh, where the kinetic energy is less than potential energy. It can be various other uh, constraint and other factors. This is pulling you down. So that is why T is less than V. So to tell in simple words, we can say that out of all the possible ways in which an object can move, we will see what do we mean by possible ways? Nature picks the one that minimizes and this is called what is called an action. Or we can also say among all the Im imaginable ways a system could evolve. Here obviously a system means not a relativistic system but a macroscopic system. Nature will choose the path where the balance between motion and energy is captured by a quantity called action. And it is most efficient and nature will take that path. 
Now, important from here, there are three important concepts which emerges. One which I highlighted in red, what is the action, what it is called. The second one is called principle of least action. And all those two factors, how they actually relate finally to the Lagrangian. So when we talk of basically what is an action, I would like to uh, demonstrate to you, think of these two particles. Uh, to uh, any nice particles and these are starting at t1 position and reaching up to t2 so there can be one path which can be curly this way and i name this as s2 the particle can take this trajectory i can go further around and i name that uh, trajectory as s3 the particle can take that trajectory also or i can take all the way around which i name is at s4 the particle can take that trajectory also but what we essentially found is that the particle takes this path, which is the S1, which is the red path, which, which actually it um, goes through. So this path is what is called the lowest value. That means it takes the minimal value and mathematically we denote is as delta S. So delta is equal to zero. That means it has taken the lowest value. So the action principle actually tells that the path of a physical system between two points in time is the one which in which the action as has a stationary or usually a minimal value. So what we can see from here is that delta S equals to zero. It means that small changes to the path don't change the total action and you can imagine that path to be absolutely right so for example this person okay think of this person mountain hiker climbing up the rope they don't take the steepest or the flattest path instead they pick a route that balances effort safety and the terrain and remember it is not random it is optimal so that is exactly that nature does through action principle it chooses the path where the total action is just right so small changes to the path make no difference mathematically we say that delta s equals to zero or which has got the optimal balance point so this is basically what is called the action principle i would say what is what is called an action so from there we come to what is called the principle of least action. Now the principle of least action is basically out of all the possible paths we have just seen. The path the system naturally follows is the one where the total action is minimal. Now the question is that why do we call it as an action principle? Because uh, we call it a principle because in science a principle is a fundamental rule. Uh, something so general and deep that it applies to a wide range of systems. So the principle of least action, remember it is not just a trick for solving equations. Among all the possible paths that one nature actually chooses, not only balances everything perfectly, it often turns out to be minimize the action. So we got first the action, a number, delta s equals to zero, that summarizes the motion of a system over time. Then we got the second one, which is called the action principle which where the nature chooses a path where delta s equals to zero and then the principle of least action it is a principle that also happens to minimize the action in small in, in most of the real cases now from here we now move to the uh, final part where we all relate these two and what is this relation to the lagrangian so the lagrangian actually is the building block of uh, the action which is s first let me show you a very simple mathematical equation then i will explain you what does it mean and how does it relate to so this is the equation here this s is nothing but a scalar quantity for example it is just a number you can imagine it to be one two three or anything t1 is basically where you start the system when we start evolving the system t2 where finally the particle or the system evolves into and dt uh, d is the uh, l is the lagrangian that changes and dt is basically with a small difference over time so what the equation over here is telling is that it measures how the Lagrangian changes over time dt between the time t1 when we start studying the system and finish studying the system at t2. Here the value of s changes as we change the Lagrangian and the Lagrangian changes if our system has different kinetic and or potential energies. So if we take the Lagrangian l equals to t minus v and then we just plug in the l over this equation. So what does it tell? Here we see the definition of action. So it is the integral of the total sum of the Lagrangian, which is simply kinetic minus potential energy. So we calculate this from the initial time T1 and it is to the final time T2. And this quantity called action helps us to determine the actual path the system will follow. 
So this actually connects all the three, the action, the action principle and what it relates to the Lagrangian. Starting over a particle with system T1, where it will go, we are just summing it over with a small difference over time and this is basically how the L is substituted over there and the integral uh, uh, takes down the whole story. So far so good. But the question is that why do we at all need a Lagrangian? We are all good with f equals to ma and the Newtonian mathematics. Suddenly why do we turn to kinetic and potential energies? Well, to answer this question you need to understand that nature is always not very simple. Often there are ma too many forces as you can see f1, f2, f3, f4 and so on. They are pulling, pushing, twisting, all acting at once. Now trying to tackle each one individually is a very big problem. So if we uh, get around these forces and we consider them uh, as individual forces and then we mention the vectors and then we mention the Cartesian coordinates x, y, z and we compute using Newtonian mechanics, well it is a very lengthy and a very complex process. So to ease life out what we do is we take the Lagrangian, we take the kinetic and the potential energy and we are just dealing with a scalar quantity. Right? So we do, don't need to resolve into components. Think of this, if we take those small little particles, when we zoom into these tiny particles, Newton's famous equation comes alive for f equals to ma. It tells us how a particle responds when a force applied. But the problem is that it is good, simple and elegant, but only when the forces and motions are straightforward. Now, as systems grow, as it becomes more complex, this formula becomes harder to deal directly. So, what we do? We sum up. Instead of summing up or doing the mathematics of individual particles we, for, uh, of force, we sum up with the total energy and we get the... Uh, uh, we get the solution quite easily. So dealing with individual particles, dealing with individual forces are so difficult sometimes with complex, uh, complex systems that we cannot use Newtonian mechanics with shift to the Lagrangian. Now if you have gone to my earlier videos in Einstein, Hilbert action etc. you will all see that when complexity is in quantum field theory, quantum gravity etc. rises, we cannot use Newtonian mechanics. That is the limitation. We have to use something which is the Lagrangian. Now, say for example, I demonstrate to you this one. Instead of chasing every force, the Lagrangian is just forcing on two factors, that is the energy, kinetic and potential, and it describes a powerful and elegant way to describe the laws of motion. So, for example, if I show you a double pendulum, which is tracing these paths, you go up and down and up and down, then we take a triple pendulum which is further more complex. So you can see each of these items have got a tangential and radial components, gravity splits, tension acting in changing in directions, then we have got two radial equations, two tangential equations, then we get equations with four unknowns, well it is a big problem. So instead of, in order to avoid all those things, what we do is that we construct the Lagrangian. Don't worry if you don't understand the equation, we will explain it later. But just understand that we construct an equation which is the Lagrangian. We plug into something more elegant which I will explain later which is called the Euler-Lagrange equation and we get the desired result. Now you might be wondering this math at the end what it is that zero. Right, well, what it shows that is the zero. It simply means that there is no external torque, no dividing force. The motion is governed entirely by the system own dynamics, pure natural oscillation. So what you see here is not just math, it is what naturally emerges when you apply the Euler-Lagrange equation to a pendulum. You don't, uh, you're not tracking forces directly. You're defining a Lagrangian. That means the kinetic minus potential energy and from that the motion just falls out. So this is the beauty of the Lagrangian approach. It leads you to the same equation of motion but with less force hunting with less amount of complications. Now you might have heard about something which is called a many body system. So you've got many particles which are oscillating around, they're creating complicated curves etc. In this kind of a scenario Newtonian mechanics is difficult. As I told you that it has to handle multiple constraint forces, tensions, gravity, etc. Lagrangian mechanics makes it simple. So you can see here that we take the Lagrangian for formalism, we just take one scalar equation, apply the Euler-Lagrange equation and you get the results. So, so the many body system which is dealing with so much of complications are just solved elegantly using Lagrangian mechanics. So in this part of the video we are understanding why do we need it because until we understand why then the mathematics will just be in the books and you won't enjoy it. 
Similarly, we can deal with something called the coordinates. Because in general, with Cartesian coordinates, simple things are simple. We describe motion in street lines, car, roadblocks, using Newtonian mechanics those things are fine but, na but but as you understand that it doesn't really happens in that way so here pendulum oscillates create complex curves here you got uh, the uh, you know the motion of elliptical curves the planets which are orbiting around the center of a mass it can be sun on anything and then you got the totochrone or the branches trochon problem where the beads are you know uh, finding their way up down the curve so all things you can understand things are quite complex when you describe the world straight lines or swirling spirals things come in play so here also what happens that we get a lot of complex curvilinear coordinates so how long we will generalize and do those coordinate systems so what it happens is that in this case lagrangian mechanics doesn't care about what kind of coordinates you are dealing with what kind of motion you are dealing with you just calculate the total kinetic energy and the potential energy subtract and you get the math very easily so this is something very elegant so nature actually won't allow you or follow a simple possible path it would be complex swirling twisting etc and that is where the lagrangian mechanics come in play so in order to uh, uh, you know tell you more uh, as you can see over here that this is a kind of a, a curvilinear path so nature often moves in curves not in straight lines the lagrangian doesn't care when you use it uh, it gives you a generalized coordinates much more elegant so cartesian polar spherical doesn't matter it can deal with all so what you ask is just what is the energy of the system you plug in the mathematics and you get the answer so newtonian mechanics in this uh, case there's a limitation i won't say fail that would be a wrong word it's the limitation so lagrangian adapts uh, all those things in a much better way so here is to summarize today's bit size uh, concepts as i told you it would be simple and to the point so lagrangian is not about tracking each and every force individually that would create a lot of problem but it's just about understanding how energy flows through the system whatever complex cartesian or polar coordinates we are taking many body two body problems etc lagrangian or the euler lagrange equation plug in those mathematics get the parameters and that is how the things will flow so uh, with clarity flexibility and deep physical insight no matter how the universe chooses to move so that's it for today's video if you have liked the fresh new episode which i have started don't forget to subscribe to my channel physics for students and click on the bell icon so that you get all the notification from physics for students you can also follow me on my social media handles which i'm quite active nowadays posting a lot of other things other than videos and you can write to my this email id which i try to respond as early as possible so this is all for the first episode of bsc bit sized concepts i will be carrying on with putting up very complex topics in very little time and make it crisp to the clear clarified and foundational which will make things easier simpler and fun loving that's all for today's video please do let me know how do you like it and we will meet you soon till then may the good lord be with you